Welcome into Blue Raider Athletics Facebook page. We are live tonight coming to you from the Emmett and Rose Cannon Hall of Fame building here on the MTSU campus. It is our 2017 Raycom Media Camellia Bowl preview show. And tonight for the next oh, 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to kind of give you a lot of information or what information we don't have. We're going to try to give you uh, places you can go for more information. But today was college football's version of Se Selection Sunday and Middle Tennessee was selected among the uh, 80 schools or, se or 78 schools that will be participating in, uh, in college bowl games. And the Raiders have been selected. They will take on Arkansas State on December 16th. The game is in Montgomery, Alabama, so no excuses. Everybody has a chance to go see Middle Tennessee take on Arkansas State. It is a 7 o'clock Central Time kickoff. And the man who has uh, led the Raiders to for the first time in school history, three straight bowl games. Coach Rick Stockstill is here to uh, kick off our show, literally. And it has been quite a day for you, hasn't it, Stock? Yeah, Chip, it's, it's been, first of all, I'm really honored and, and happy for our players and our team uh, to be able to continue this season playing a bowl game. And uh, we're really excited about going to Montgomery and playing in the Camellia Bowl. And uh, it ought to be a great experience for everybody involved. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting opponent as well with yeah. Arkansas State, uh, a, a school and a program that we were very familiar with, played against them for 12 years as conference opponents when we were in the Sun Belt. And, uh, and then there are a lot of connections on that coaching staff. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, they're, they're a really good football team, first of all. I think they've won five of the last seven Sun Belt Conference championships. Uh, Blake Anderson, who was here, uh, not when I was here, but he was here earlier in his career, has done a fantastic job. And then, you know, Buster Faulkner, their offensive coordinator, uh, has done a great job. Joe Cawthon, their defensive coordinator. Um, Luke, Luke Pascal played wide receiver here my first year. And then Parks Frazier was a GA uh, hmm. one year here. And uh, before going on to Arkansas State. So they've got a great coaching staff. We'll talk a little bit about football, uh, the football part of it at the end, but that is the opponent. It's Arkansas State uh, on the, the 16th of December. But uh, today was kind of an emotional day, but let's back it up even a little bit more. Uh, we talked after the game against UTEP, and I said, Stock, make your case. And you came with 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 all the things that you should come with about why this team is deserving to play in the postseason and very passionate about it but you have a real belief and and really uh you know really got behind this effort to get this team in a bowl game yeah you know i i, th I thought our team deserved one after our last game and you know how we finished um you know the players that we had lost during the course of the year because of injury you know we're coming back and you know, the schedule we played and beating Syracuse, who, you know, beat the number one team, Clemson, in the country. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, we deserved to be in there and uh, was really proud uh, of the team of what what they overcame this year. And, and if you weren't inside that locker room every day, if you weren't at practice every day, you really don't know the magnitude of what this team had to overcome because it was – I mean, it was a different team that we were putting out there every week. And, uh, you know, they never gave up. They fought their guts out. They played extremely hard. So 
that's why, you know, after our last game, I, I was so passionate, like you said, that this team deserved to be in one. Yep, and, and you backed that up. You talked to the conference yeah. office. Well, yeah, you know, I, I talked to, to Chris today, and it was about 12 o'clock or so in that range, and, you know, when it didn't, was looking kind of iffy there maybe, and I, and I told him, I said that, you know, I'll personally buy, you know, $10,000 worth of tickets you know, from us, you know, for, you know, if that'll help show that we're, we're going to, that how serious we are about coming to this game. And, and what I want to do, and I, I've talked to Chris, and we haven't really, you know, finalized it yet, but I'm going to buy $10,000 worth of tickets for this game, and, and I want to give them to the students because they haven't been able to go to a bowl game the last two years because of our destination where it's been in Bahamas and Hawaii. And, and I just want to show them my appreciation to them for coming to the games, what they do. So we'll put something out. We'll get something out on Twitter, sidelines, social media, you know, how you can come by here and pick up a ticket this week. But I wanted the conference to know how serious we were about this. Yeah, and, and that is the case. As it, as it all came down, you, you, you're, you're paying off our, our students on campus for their support with, with your generosity. Now talk about how you handled your team today because it has been a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, it's been a very emotional week for me, you know, this entire week for a couple different reasons. But, you know, I set the meeting last week after the Old Dominion game at, at 2 o'clock and because uh, I, I thought we would know something by then and had it come out, you know, they really didn't start making their picks until 2 o'clock. But I really felt like I'd know in – you know, it got to be about 150, and uh, it didn't look, you know, all the bowls hadn't picked yet, but it didn't look good. And I talked to our team, and I told them that, you know, right now it, it doesn't look good that we're going to get in. It's not finalized yet. There's three over, and, um, you know, they're still deciding between those three. But, you know, with our bowl allotment that Conference USA had and the amount of teams that qualified, it just – you know, it didn't look good. So it was an emotional meeting. It was emotional for me. It was emotional for those seniors and our entire team. And, you know, and so I guess about 315, that, that meeting took 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then an hour later, I'm in my office and I'm packing up, getting ready to go recruiting. And, you know, Chris and Courtney and AC come in and, you know, they gave me the news and I got emotional again. So, um, <laughs> Just uh, it, it's been a roller coaster of a week, you know, from an emotional standpoint. What's the importance to you of going to this bowl game and being successful? Well, you know, it, it helps in so many facets of your program. You know, it 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 helps in recruiting. Obviously, that you know, you can say we've been bowl eligible. You know, nine out of the twelve years that I've been here, that you know, now we've gone what seven straight years of bowl eligibility and you know, three straight bowls. So we're showing consistency in what we're doing. And, and like I said, you know, you know, to somebody I was interviewed a little bit ago that, you know, with the schedule we play, there's really no margin for error. And uh, you almost have to be perfect, and we weren't perfect. So, uh, you know, we were able to overcome it. You know, our team just uh, – I'm so proud of them, uh, you know, and what they've accomplished. And uh, I just, uh, I'm happy for our team and just, you know, it, our whole entire program to, you know, to do what we've done for 12 years with the consistency that we've done it, you know, just makes me proud of what we've accomplished. Well, now let's talk about the football part of it. You guys have to get right back to practice because this game is, what, 13 days away. Yeah, you know, last week was the first week of recruiting. So we were out all last week. We had official visits in last week or this past weekend we'll recruit monday tuesday and wednesday we'll, uh, we'll fly out everybody's out now except me i'll get out in the morning and uh you know then our players will lift and run and throw and all that um, tomorrow tuesday and wednesday and then our first practice will be thursday and we'll go you know thursday friday saturday and you know kind of check out sunday a little bit see you know how we're doing there but then Monday through Friday the following week, you know, you're in game week. Yep, and you uh, will obviously, with it being a bowl game, you'll travel to the bowl site 
and, uh, and practice there in Montgomery. Uh, and as far as the matchup, Arkansas State, as you mentioned, very good. They're tremendous offensively. They've got a really terrific defensive tackle. What do you know about them yet? I know you're going to get more into it. Yeah, you know, I haven't watched them much on film. I hadn't watched any on film. But I did, uh, I'd watch them on those Tuesday, Wednesday night games because mainly because of Buster and, and Joe. I, I was following those guys. And then I was flipping back and forth last night between their game and the Ohio State-Wisconsin game. So they're really talented. Their defensive line is, is really good. They've got the transfer from Alabama. Then they've got a defensive end that needs a half a sack. I don't know if that's to be the Sun Belt all-time sack leader or the Arkansas State all-time sack leader. But, but he's good. He, he's really talented. And then, you know, their linebackers can run. Their secondary is really good. So it's, it's, a, it's a good football team we're playing. And you have an opportunity to go into it pretty healthy. You hope, you yeah. know, we, we didn't we didn't finish uh, Old Dominion healthy, you know, but they've had a week and just, you know, I, I'll know more now that uh, that we know we're playing and I can uh, check in with some guys and see how they're doing, but I'm hopeful that we'll be healthy. Well, not that you have a shortage of anything to do tonight, but want to thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Congratulations to you and your ball club. I, I thank you, Chip, and I I'm, I'm, wouldn't want to be anywhere else but right here on this night, so I appreciate it. Absolutely. We've got a whole lot more to come. Chris Massaro comes up next. We're going to be talking to uh, the BRAA alumni, uh, a whole lot more, so stick with us here on Facebook. But right now, let's take a look at our host city, Montgomery, Alabama. It's time to take a road trip. Hit the road to Montgomery. There's a capital idea. You can drop in and say hi to Hank. Then sit down next to an inspiration. Gives you chills. Take yourself out to the ball game. What you know, Big Mo? You can get your groove on. And just putter about. Alabama has a road trip with your name on it. Which one you gonna take? Welcome back into our Raycom Media Camellia Bowl preview show. Chip Walters with you. And uh, first of all, we'll give out some ticket numbers, 615-898-5261. Uh, it is very, very important for Blue Raider fans to get behind this bowl effort. And Director of Athletics Chris Massaro joins us. And we heard about Stocks Day. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about your day. Oh, boy. I think it's pretty similar to Rick. Uh, but and this, this has become almost like Selection Sunday in basketball, hasn't it? Yeah, the, sometimes there's a lot of information in the system and we kind of know where people are going to go and where it's slotted. And nobody had any very, a very good idea. I mean, obviously ESPN has a lot of influence over the, pro, over the whole process and, and they weren't talking much because there was so much uncertainty. So even at the very top with, is it going to be Alabama or Ohio State? So all those dominoes had to fall and uh, so we thought for a while I mean it was a roller coaster hey our chances are pretty good I feel pretty good and then the longer we went with that information it just got worse and worse and so we were fairly well resigned at the end Chip we might not make the cut yeah and then it happened you and got a call happened. yeah I got the call it's about 3 15 or so and I look at my phone and it was uh, our commissioner Judy McLeod and Think she was calling you to get uh, little was, condolences? Yeah, I, I didn't know. <laughs> and so, you know, I said, well, let me get this. I was with Mark Owens and Courtney. And, and so I, I answered the phone and I could tell immediately by kind of the excitement in her voice that, that we were in. And, and uh, I don't really remember much of the conversation, to be honest with you, because we were all pretty overwhelmed. And uh, it was so exciting to, to get that call. And, and uh, so then we went down the hallway and told Coach Stock, and I think he just talked about that as well. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, so it was a really, it was a roller coaster. And, and I got to compliment the, the conference, Chip, that Judy really stood up tall for us and for the conference. And, and, uh, and with 10 teams eligible, yeah. you know, to try to find spots for as many of those, that's not an easy job. No, and, and Everybody was putting pressure on her, all 10 schools. So uh, she, her goal, and she was very uh, very consistent in her communication, hey, we're going to try to get as many as we can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all 10, but we're going to sure try. And, boy, she got nine of the 10. You know, and I really feel for San Antonio. I, I would have loved to have our conference 
be 10 for 10. That's a, such a great accomplishment to have 10 bull teams, 10 bull eligible teams out of this conference. And uh, so I feel for them. I feel for Western Michigan. I feel for Buffalo. We've been in those shoes before, but we're also so grateful. I'm extremely excited that we're not in those shoes this year. And uh, so we just got to make the best of it. Our fans got to get excited and come to the game. Our, our players need to be excited. Our coaches need to be excited. Let's go win this thing. Probably in the top five emails, Twitter messages, things you've gotten over the last two years was get us a bowl close to home. Well, yeah. it's happened. Yeah. Okay. And I, so. Because I mean, <laughs> particularly last year, I mean, I, I think the Bahamas Bowl, everybody kind of understood. understood that. And, and it was a great destination. And to go two island bowls back to back, well, those are great trips. And. I don't want to sound ungrateful. It was really hard on us. It was hard on our ops people. It, it was hard on our fans. It was our, our best fans that we have in our stadium, our band of blue, weren't able to go to either one of those games. And so we definitely, our next bowl game, wanted to, to be where people could go. And, and it worked out perfectly, Chip, that we get a bowl game that's four to four and a half mile, hours down the road. Yeah. And so it's perfect. So I can't wait. I'm excited for our band of blue. I'm excited for our cheerleaders. Uh, I'm excited for our fans that go to all of our games and support us all the way through. So, so it's going to be a great event. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and, and now here's an opportunity to talk directly to our fan base yeah. who is watching tonight on Facebook and, and tell them the importance of, of, of purchasing those tickets and not only purchasing them, it's really important to make a good show and be in the stands at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery. It, it is very important. And, you know, the better we do in bowls, the better our attendance is, the more power we have in the marketplace. It's a pretty simple equation. And honestly, we didn't have much of a track record right now. I mean, in the New Orleans game and, and, and the, the GoDaddy are almost ancient history. So we had two island bowls. So it's really important that the guy that does all the selections kind of, he sent me a note and says, our, the Blue Raiders need to take over the streets of Montgomery. And he's right. We need to do that. And there's nothing more fun, too, than being at a bull site and seeing your friends, seeing your neighbors, seeing a bunch of Blue Raiders there. And just to, let's take our town and put it in Camellia, uh, at the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. And just it's fun to see friends and neighbors there. So let, let's, turn, uh, let's turn it all blue. Let, let's get down there, hop in your cars, and let's go. Yep, and uh, I-65 needs to have, have uh, you know, remnants of blue shakers on the, on the, on the side of the road. It does. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an easy drive, and, and I think it's, a, it's kind of a test for us. It's a test to see how we do uh, and how, how our fan base travels to bowl games. I mean, and there's a little bit of this. Okay, here's what you asked for. There is. It, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of that. much like that, yeah. and, and so – uh, the because the, I have been saying, hey, look, we've got a pent up demand. We've been in the Bahamas. We've been in Hawaii. Give us a chance. And sure enough, they found us a bull through a lot of horse trading. That's that's one of the closest bulls we could possibly get to. And it's on a Saturday, so one could go Friday night and go to the game Saturday night. Go Saturday morning. Spend Saturday night at the bull site. Come home Sunday. It's an easy trip, mm -hmm. Chip. It is. Uh, it, it certainly is. And we had a lot of fans back in the day that made road trips to Troy and places yeah. like that. Hey, it's it's right on the way. So. And people have told me really that the, the, the two favorite bowl trips so far, I think New Orleans shines above everything. Uh, it was a, a perfect we, storm. We won it. Yeah. And also the the GoDaddy Bowl was very effective, but. The New Orleans Bowl, we had the most fans there, and it was fun to see fellow Blue Raiders in New Orleans and having fun. And, and it's a big social event, so let's, let's get into it and let's do it in Montgomery. Yep, and obviously football is a big deal in Montgomery, Alabama, so let's make it a big deal with the Blue Raiders. It, this has all happened so fast today. I'm not sure if we have any information on tickets, but just be we watching. Do. Oh, we do. Go right ahead there. They're $30 a piece. Uh, it's on our website, GoBlueRaiders.com. I think there's a direct link up right now. And uh, let's, let's buy up those tickets. Uh, the more tickets we buy, the more power we have in the marketplace, and, and that's really important yep. to us. Chris will be back with us as we uh, to close the show out, but we're also going to speak directly to our fans and alums here momentarily as we talk to our fine friends with the uh, Blue Raider Athletic Association and the MTSU National Alumni Association. But right now, 
Let's take another look at our host city, Montgomery, Alabama. Welcome back into our Camellia Bowl preview show. Middle Tennessee is heading to Montgomery, Alabama on Saturday, December 16th to take on the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Glad to have you along with us. And we've uh, talked to uh, Coach Rick Stockstill. We've talked to Director of Athletics Chris Massaro, who will be rejoining me a bit later. But right now, let's kind of get down to the nitty gritty with our alumni and fans. And when it comes to a postseason bowl game or postseason basketball, our National Alumni Association and the Blue Raider Athletic Association work hand in hand to make it a great fan experience. Ginger Freeman is here from the National Alumni Association, Bethany Thurston from the BRAA. And Ginger, you've been at this game for a while now and have uh, had a lot of these trips. And how important is it for, for you two guys and your offices to work together to make it a terrific fan experience? I think it's great. We um, cross over so much of our alums that are BRA members, and this is of course an opportunity for her to bring in a few more members along the way as well. But it's a great opportunity to show our appreciation to our fans 
as we go to a bowl game and provide another exciting experience for them. Yep, in, in my experience working with both of you guys, the Alumni Association a lot of times provides a great venue and a great party, things like that. The BRAA is kind of boots on the ground. Let's get those folks there and things like that. And Bethany, you do have some information that there is going to be a bus trip for fans to go to Montgomery. Yeah, we're really excited to have the opportunity for our fans. I mean, the last two years we haven't been able to take a bus trip anywhere. So we're really excited to do that. Um, we'll plan on leaving sometime on Friday and return after the game on Saturday. It's a pretty cheap cost, in my opinion, for $75 to get you there and back. And what is, what is that? that what is that's that? just for the That's just for the bus. Just, yeah, you'll a have to get ticket? your hotel and your ticket, but $75 and we'll do the driving. Now, are you are you all going to, as far as it, with if you have, you know, a bus or two or three or four full, are you going to try to uh, get them all in hotel or their hotel room blocks? Or what, what can you say about that at this point? Again, we're very early in this process. And there's going to be a whole lot more information on the bowl page, bowl central on, on goblueraiders.com. But, but as far as, as making reservations within a block, things like that, what can you say? Yeah, if you want to ride it on the bus with us, you can definitely call our office tomorrow, email us, whatever is easiest for you. Um, and we will most definitely have the um, hotel accommodations ready before close of business tomorrow. So that, that, you, you, that means they will know, they can, will they be able to book directly through you or yeah, they'll, 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 they'll book likely directly to the hotel? The hotel. Yeah, okay. but we'll have the discounted rate ready for them. All right, now Ginger, uh, there's typically a a, uh, a big throwdown, whether it's the day of the game or night before the game, that kind of thing. What's kind of rolling around in your head right now? Well, we're looking. We've always tried to work with the bowls and make sure that we encourage our fans to participate in all of the bowl activities that are going on, uh, in addition to the things that we come up with. So we know that there's a pep rally on Friday, so we're, we're going to work around some things. No, I think well, actually the pep rally's on Saturday. See? Correct. See? Too, too new to be figuring all this out. Yeah. Uh, but we will work on uh, having a social maybe on Friday night and then work around the pep rally and some other activities on Saturday and do something pre-game close to the stadium like we've done in the past with our other games. We've tried to make sure that um, we provide a good experience on game day at the stadium to make it easier on our fans and especially this year when it's so close our fans that come down the night before can have something to do and then if they drive down on Saturday morning then uh, they're set that afternoon as well. Now if fan, fans need to know f through both of your offices uh, very good social media channels mm -hmm. with a lot of the the social type things mm -hmm. that are going to be going on for fans as a matter of fact I heard a comment here that uh, Michelle uh, Blevins in your office almost broke the news that we were in the bowl game before the school could. So she is on top of things. She is on top of things. Now tell folks uh, the social media channels they need to be looking at both on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Right. Uh, MT alumni for all of those. Yeah. And ours is MT underscore BRAA. And we'll be partnering with the Alumni Association all, on all the events. And then the clearinghouse for everything is on GoBlueRaiders.com with the Bowl Central page. All of the events are there, the event calendar, uh, how to contact you guys, how to contact the ticket office for everything. Um, and, and that is a work in progress as we move uh, toward, toward the bowl game and, and game day on the 16th. So a lot of work, I mean, you, you all have brought notebooks and pens tonight. You all <laughs> and are texting and making a lot of plans right here. So it's gonna be a fun trip. And, and you heard Chris talking about it that, you know, the New Orleans Bowl was a, a great, great trip, and we had a perfect storm there of things that happened and, and all of that. It was just terrific. But there was so much positive talk about the trip to Mobile, and I have a feeling that Montgomery is going to rival Mobile as a great host city. I hope so. It seems that there are a lot of activities that are similar. There seems yep. to be a parade like we had before. So I think there'll be a lot of similarities uh, for us to enjoy. And also there's a sense of urgency here because the game is 13 days from now. So yeah. give, give some phone numbers for people to call. Yeah, ours is 615-898-2210. Uh, and we really hope to see everyone there. You guys have asked for it. So we're, we're bringing it to you. That's right. And the other mm -hmm. thing too, Ginger, the first call they probably need to make uh, is make sure you get your tickets. Yeah, right. tickets are only $30 and that link is already live. Yeah, for a bowl game, you, and you can call the number, but one thing we, we really stress, whether it's the bowl game or a basketball game with Ole Miss next week, whatever it is, 
you can get the same ticket inventory online, print them right there, and, uh, and, and, and you're ready to go. So go blueraiders.com slash tickets or on the bowl page. All of that is, 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 uh, is there, 898-5261. And of course, uh, again, the clearinghouse is goblueraiders.com. Keep watching. More details are going to be coming uh, very soon. But $30 tickets, $75 bus trip, and then you're going to have an alumni function uh, night before the game. Sounds like it's starting to shape up. It's going to be great. All right, ladies, thanks for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Jim. All right, the Camellia Bowl preview show continues. We're going to kind of get into the football part of this a little bit more. Will Redmond from the Blue Raider football office is going to be with us. And with that in mind, let's kind of get you footballed up a little bit with some offensive highlights. Hey folks, December 16th is the day. It is the fourth Raycom Media Camellia Bowl, Montgomery, Alabama kickoff at seven o'clock on Saturday night, December 16th. And uh, I'd said we were gonna see offensive highlights. We saw defensive highlights there, but uh, Middle Tennessee's defense has been outstanding this year. And uh, we're gonna talk about the football part of this with Will Redman. And uh, we heard some from Coach Stock uh, there's a whole lot of moving parts in the football office right now, bowl game or not, because this year is a whole new era in college football because not only do we have a bowl game on December 16th, we have signing day on December 20th. We sure do. Yes, sir, we <laughs> sure do. Uh, looking forward to it. We're very excited about it. Uh, had the opportunity to host some of those prospects this weekend with their families, and obviously when you get to bring them into a town like Murfreesboro that, that really – bleeds blue. I mean, you, you get to bring them here. They get to see everything. Uh, it kind of solidifies some of those commitments. So very excited. Looking forward to the 20th. Uh, looking forward to have more uh, guys jump on board here shortly. Well, and, and with that in mind, it's, uh, you know, kind of curious. Does anybody have any grasp on how, on how this is going to play out across the landscape of college football having an early signing day? You know what? I, no one really knows what it'll look like uh, when the dust settles, but I know uh, when you just focus on your program and what your program needs, and as we continue to evaluate top prospects and try and bring them here uh, to Murfreesboro and, and to Middle Tennessee, uh, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what other people do. You but, know, yeah, we're, we're concerned with what we're going to do, and, and we're going to go get the best we can. As future Raiders are eyeing this program, going into the bowl game, one thing they need to know is that uh, it is a first-class trip year in, year out, when the Blue Raiders go to a bowl game? Uh, there's no doubt. We travel in style. We do a great job of, of taking care of everybody, making sure everybody on our team 
uh, gets to go. So we're able to, you know, you use the phrase, we're able to sell that in recruiting and go, look, you look at the program that Coach Stockstill's built at this, at this university, the number of bowl games, uh, appearances, and the years eligible, it's second to none, really, um, for our level of college football. So uh, when those recruits see those numbers and they sit down and they think about it, it really means a lot. So yeah. uh, we try and to use that. There'll be a lot of excitement with the players, too, because it is a, it's an opponent that we are – that we have a familiarity with, Certainly. in particular on the coaching staffs. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to coach uh, with or be around many of those individuals. I have on the uh, on the camp circuit and things, the way uh, kind of recruiting has changed over the last two or three years. And uh, great men uh, and, and looking forward to competing against them in Montgomery. I heard you, you guys said you were bringing in, you had uh, recruits on campus over the weekend. I mean, a lot of times those official visits don't come in January, or they don't come until January or late January, leading up to a February signing date. Now, we're still going to have that, right? Certainly, yeah, that will be so two the, signing days this year. December 20th and then the first Wednesday in February, As right? As always, yes, sir. So, and, uh, and, and, and the Blue Raider coaching staff, we heard uh, Coach Stock talk about it. They're all out right now and will be. This is, this is you know, right when you need to be – what, 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 tell us about the recruiting calendar, if you can, just a little bit over the next week or two. Certainly, yeah. We're actually in what we call a contact period, so our coaches are able to go out and see kids at home, uh, see them at school, kind of had some direct one-on-one -on -one contact with them that they've not been able to have outside of uh, campus. So it gives them a great opportunity to meet and sit with families, and, and the most important piece of all this is the relationship. So you're trying to build meaningful relationships between families, prospects, and our coaching staff, because as much as it us, is us – selecting them and, and wanting to know that they're the they're a good fit we want them to know that we're a good fit for them as well and when you find those relationships it really balances out pull back the curtain a little bit and tell folks what what's a player's week like at a bowl site wow yeah uh, uh, the the week is, is number one you take over the hotel uh, there's no doubt yeah absolutely so we and we there's definitely video in, games and pool tables and oh yeah you got the lounges so you got the video games the pool tables uh, you've got you know, in all of these bowl sites, there's always great activities uh, for our guys to do. And I haven't seen the list of things. Obviously, uh, we're getting more information as, as kind of hours go by now, having made the selection and, and heading down to Montgomery. But um, having the opportunity for these guys to go out, experience new places, visit, you know, try different cuisines, do all kinds of different things uh, is really what makes these trips worthwhile. And I, I don't care where that bowl is located. Uh, you're going to get – a taste of the town you're going to get to see and try and do different things and our guys are really looking forward to it you could see the look on their face when we met when coach Stockstill met with our team uh, these guys are pumped up and they're ready to roll and it'll certainly be true southern hospitality this year as we go down uh, down the road to montgomery alabama well good luck on not only uh, getting everything uh, moving down the rails uh, with the football team but also keeping in contact with all those recruits who could be future Blue Raiders as, as we head toward that December 20th signing date. That, that's Christmas coming early for a lot of teams. Boy, I, and, and when you have a staff like we have here that truly believes that the foundation of your program is formed on the recruiting trail and they attack it and they go after it, it makes my job easy. Yeah. Uh, I wake up every morning uh, loving to come to work here. And so uh, when, you've got, when you've got coaches on the road really pounding the pavement for Middle Tennessee, uh, we have a good time, and it shows on the football field on Saturdays. We'll appreciate the time. Thank you very much. The site for the 2017 uh, Camellia Bowl uh, presented by Raycom Media is the historic Crampton Bowl. And uh, a lot of folks remember on Christmas Day watching the Blue-Gray All-Star game played at the Crampton Bowl. As a matter of fact, uh, Blue Raider Hall of Famer Kelly Holcomb was the MVP of the Blue-Gray game, played right on that field. Here's a look at the Crampton Bowl, and what it has now turned into it is a major complex in the city of Montgomery. Welcome to Montgomery, Alabama, the sports capital of the South and home to this brand new state-of-the-art facility. Multiplex at Crampton Bowl, located in downtown Montgomery, is a 90,000 square foot indoor multipurpose facility with flexible meeting space. The recreational area is about 57,000 square feet with fixed seating for 1,100, but the complex can seat up to 5,000. The multiplex can accommodate six volleyball courts, four tennis courts, two indoor soccer fields, 12 wrestling mats with stadium seating, and four basketball courts. 
Additional events include gymnastics, horseshoe pitching, beach volleyball, cheerleading competitions, boxing, weightlifting, and ultimate frisbee. Crampton Bowl, the city's football stadium, is adjacent to the multiplex and is less than a mile from hotels, attractions, and the downtown entertainment district. Amenities for the stadium include brand new artificial turf, seating for 24,000 plus fans, state-of-the-art lighting by Musco, newly renovated locker rooms and press box, concessions, wireless internet, cable TV, and state-of-the-art video board. We look forward to hosting your next sporting event in Montgomery, Alabama, the capital of dreams. All right, folks, you've heard a lot about uh, the trip coming up to the 2017 Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. And uh, we've heard from Coach Stock, we've heard from the Alumni Association, we've heard from the BRAA, we've heard from the football program. And now to kind of wrap things up, put a big bow around it, we bring uh, uh, Director of Athletics Chris Massaro back in. And again, it's kind of mind boggling, Chris, that Conference USA led all conferences in college football this year with 10 bowl eligible schools. Yeah, it's, it's really a great feat for all the schools involved. And I, I think it's showing a, a great evolution in Conference USA for football. And, and it put a lot of pressure, quite honestly, on our conference office to find homes. And I, I just, again, want to publicly thank our commissioner, Judy McLeod. I think her and Merton Hanks and Brian Macon out of the office that they all stood tall for us. And and we gave them the messaging that, that we wanted to give and they carried it to through to th through to the bowls and that was really really important uh, so I can't thank them enough that uh, I know they went the extra mile and, and it feels so good when you're in that partnership and it, uh, so so I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did I, I honestly chip I think we might have been the last team selected but I'm sure happy to be in but we're in there that's true absolutely let's and go make the best of it. <laughs> exactly and uh, again, the importance of fans to, to be part of this effort and movement, uh, it really sends a loud message across the landscape of college football. It does, and, and I can't emphasize that enough. I've gotten an email from ESPN that says that uh, they fully expect our fans to take over the streets of Montgomery. Uh, we got a, uh, a message from the Cure Bowl director that said that you know, that people will be watching and, and that all the bowl ex directors will see how we do in, in Montgomery since everybody knows it's an easy drive for our fans. So this is a really critical to our bowl future. And, and so we need to activate our fan base and encourage them to come. And I think it should be an easy sell because if you come, it'll be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, and uh, it, we heard uh, some of the activities that are going to be going on, but yeah. that 48, 72 hours leading up to the game. That's always a fun time to be it's in the Bowl a good City. Time. And, and they're going to have a Christmas parade and a, a pep rally. And it's just going to be fun. Friday night's going to be fun. We're going to have a great tailgate Saturday. So I, I don't care how the fans do it. If they come Saturday morning and spend Saturday night after the game or Friday and, uh, and see the pep rally and, and spend Friday night and come home Saturday, if they only want to spend one night, that's great, but we just need them to come. I was going to say, you know, we, tomorrow morning would be a great time to kick off ticket sales. Tonight would be a great time to yeah, kick off ticket them. sales. The, the, the link's up. Go to GoBlueRaiders.com. The link is there. Uh, $30, which is as affordable a bowl ticket as you can find anywhere. It, I was pleasantly surprised at that as well. And, and I've been told by others that have gone there, like App State had a tremendous experience there. And, and the city of Montgomery just really opens their arms to the bowl and visitors from the bowl. And so I guarantee our fans will have a great time. And the city of Montgomery is going to be so welcoming. It's going to be a, a, a blast. So it'll be well worth people's time and effort to go. Anything you want to add here at the end? I think we've said a lot tonight, <laughs> Chip. And, and just the process. And if you have questions, give us a call. We, we certainly need you guys. But we need you all to participate in this process too, so buy a ticket and hop in your car and come. All right, so that'll wrap it up for us tonight. Again, all the information can be found on GoBlueRaiders.com, and we invite you to be part of the Blue Raider Nation as they head to the 2017 Raycom Media Camellia Bowl.
had a dream, a beautiful dream. I couldn't believe how real it seems. Up on stage in a field of green, on the winding river, and a song you sing. When I wake up, I'll see you, you in Montgomery, where dreams come true.